Hello, welcome to Have A Go and I'm Alan. You join me today in the Have A Go kitchen where we're going to have a whack at making the sand corn. Alright, we've got the dry ingredients which I need to mix up and the wet ingredients which I also need to mix up. We'll start with mixing up the dry I think. Alright, this is just sand, no bentonite clay in it, to which I've which I've put through a fine sieve. So I need 20 parts sand to 1 part flour. So 60 ml. Flour is less dense, so hopefully I can get away with putting more in. Right, let's try and mix it with a pair of chopsticks. Now for a real rarity in the have a go kitchen, molasses. I've never used this stuff, so I'm going to have to come up with, we'll try and find the recipe for biscuits or something that uses it. This is 10 parts water to 1 part molasses. The modern way to do this would be to get sodium silicate, mix it with the sand and blow carbon dioxide gas through it to immediately harden it once you've got it in the mould. The only, so the only carbon dioxide gas I have is what I breathe out and that would not be sufficient I suspect. Well, when I put the chopstick into the bottom of the dish, I'm not bringing up any solid molasses, so I'm going to call that mixed. Cat, if you want to go out, then go out. Or use the other door. Silly cat. This isn't mentioned in the book, but Maker Size had trouble with the cores sticking unless he put some flour into the core box. I'm going to leave that one deliberately long and I'm going to cut this one to just the right length. The book doesn't give any good measurements for how much molasses water to add. He just says until it's tempered. A very narrow little teaspoon. You know I've been saving this for a reason. Alright, hopefully we can get these vent wires in. Now let's see if I've been wasting my time. That vent wire is not meant to be there. Okay, change of plans. I'm making this up as I go along in case it's not obvious by now. That vent wire is for reinforcement. This vent wire is so I can pull it out afterwards for a vent hole going through through which gases can off <coughs> excuse me off gas doing it this way because ram in it went okay overall problem is my vent wires wandered <coughs> ah, that's with all X amount of kilos of me pressing down on it not telling you how many. Cock. Another thing that Maker Size mentioned was the core sticking to the core plate, yeah, the aluminium casting here. And he stopped that by putting tin foil down in it. And this is with shellac on it to make it non flame and stick. What a mission. Right. 
according to the book we now bake this for an hour all right please excuse the lighting it's quite early today and i want to get started and get it all cracking before the weather packs in all right i'm doing a false cope for this one because when I tapped in the other one, I don't think I tapped it in evenly, so there was a bow in the final casting. False cope will mean more work, but hopefully it'll mean a better casting too. Farting powder. Put the drag on. Alright, chuck this out because I hate myself. I'm doing two a chunky boy feeder and a chunky boy gate because I'm gonna need these to feed metal as fast as they can manage. some vents because I'm a forgetful idiot. <coughs> Big chunky boy because I've got a lot of metal going into a very thick casting. <sighs> if you want to see a complete uninterrupted edit of that ram up look in the link description box below. I'll put an unlisted video showing the whole enchilada. <coughs> this next one will be a double roll. So I'll ram up a false drag, tap this in. But like the foot casting I did for the lathe foot, there will be a hollow in here that won't be filled in. So I'll tap in the false drag, ram up the proper cope, roll it over, dump out the false drag and ram up a new proper drag roll it over a second time and then I can lift the cope off and cut some gates Trying to be careful because my pattern is only 3D printed plastic really and I don't want to break it. I'm not expecting this casting to come out good, I'm expecting this to be more of a practice run. It would be nice if it comes out good but I'm honestly not expecting it to. I'm going to guesstimate 30 kilograms. Right, now to dump this out and start again. Just what everyone wants to hear. Some passing powder on. And start ramming up the drag all over again. Now for another roll over. Sounds like the birds are having fun up up on the roof. Right. Um, cut some vents before I get too carried away.
Ha ha ha. Let's put this sand core in. Now to go and fire up the burner before the rain comes. Alright, let's check the base first. Get rid of this before I go too far. Very nice. False Cope was definitely the right choice for the base casting. That's a good one. The top's okay. The bottom turned out beautiful. Best casting result I've had yet, I think. It smells really strange, like burnt Vegemite in a way. I'm trying to be reasonably careful to not get the <coughs> core sand rubbish mixed in with the good sand. Otherwise I would just go to town and rah rah rah. There's a lot of flashing on this one. Yeah, this is the good one. Cut the sprues off. So that should be good. This one is going to be more trouble. Okay, it was meant to be hard, but good grief. I think for this one, I'll put it in a bucket of water and leave that to soak. Alright, hopefully that'll soften up the... Let's change so you can see. Hopefully that'll soften up the core and make it easier to get everything out of that silly thing. Right, I'll put this in a safe place and let it soak for a bit. 